favorite Nintendo handheld games. In the last part, I went over Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, and I fully expected to go over everything in that one video, but um, apparently when it comes to games, I can just blabber on and on and on for over 30 minutes, even if it's only seven games. So, I had to split it up into two parts. So, in this part, I will be going over the DS and 3DS games. Before I get started, there is one game in particular that I am missing. I know that I own it, but I have no idea where the case went. But, um... One of my absolute favorite games on the DS, or maybe of all time, is Tetris DS. That is the best version of Tetris that I have ever and probably will ever play. And it was an absolute tragedy when the uh, Nintendo DS was no longer able to get online for multiplayer. Because you would be extremely hard-pressed to find a better multiplayer version of Tetris. There was a four-player mode where you were battling it out in typical Tetris fashion. Every time you cleared a line, um, those lines would be distributed to one of your opponents causing them to get pushed further up the screen. And there were also items involved, very similar to how items are used in Mario Kart. So you could get a star, and uh, if you use the star item, you would uh, get only the long line tetramino. Tetramino is what the shapes are called and you could just pull off amazing combos and very quickly eliminate all of your opponents. Um, it's been so long since I've been able to play it because it's been years since the online was shut down. So, it's hard for me to remember all of the different items that you could use. Some items would, um, would mess your opponent up. I think there was an item that would reverse their controls. It was just extremely creative and so much fun. And I can't for the life of me understand why Nintendo hasn't released that for the 3DS, like exactly how it was. Just for the 3DS so that we can play online again. I miss it so much. I I put hours and hours of gameplay on Tetris DS online. But uh, now that I'm finished talking about Tetris DS, a game that I couldn't find, that I know that I have, <laughs> I'll move on to the ones that I actually do have copies of. And first, I'm going to talk about uh, New Super Mario Brothers. This game is a lot of fun. It's very similar to all of the other recent side-scroller Mario games that Nintendo has put out in the last 10 years. Hard to believe it's been that long since they started doing this again. Um, but to me, what really stands out about this game again is the multiplayer. There was some excellent multiplayer games on here that my husband and I played quite often. There was a game that was very similar to poker that we had so much fun playing. We would just sit and play that for hours together, especially before we got the uh, Tetris. On the inside, you can see there's the cartridge. And I always thought it was cool how in the DS cases, they gave you a slot to put your 
Game Boy Advance games. But yeah, this is just a very classic side-scroller Mario game with an excellent multiplayer system that, uh, again, you can't get online with it anymore, but it was so much fun. It might still work, um, for local connectivity. If you, you and a friend both have your own DS, you could probably still play it that way. But I highly recommend the mini games on this new Super Mario Brothers. Let's see. Run, jump, and stomp your way through raging volcanoes, tropical islands, snow-capped peaks, and unimaginable challenges. Grab a mega mushroom and grow to incredible proportions, or smash through your foes in a blue Koopa shell. Challenge a friend to a wireless face-off on specially designed levels, or play up to three friends in a ton of touchscreen minigames. And, uh, actually here was another minigame that was a lot of fun. It was, uh, like a whack-a-mole style game where you got points for hitting some things and then lost points for hitting others and it got harder and faster as you uh, got to later levels. But yeah, lots of fun. The new Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo DS. Next is a game that is have multiplayer options, but um, they weren't vast, and generally speaking, it was a very uh, solo game. A game that was, in my opinion, very meant to play by yourself. A game where you could build your own little world. A wild world. You have Animal Crossing Wild. I missed out on owning the GameCube version of Animal Crossing, which is the uh, original version. I had a friend in middle school who was obsessed with Animal Crossing on the GameCube. He would always come to school so sleepy because he was getting up at like four in the morning to do his lighthouse job. And I never was able to understand why he would go through such trouble until I got this game. Now, this game is quite different from the GameCube, from my understanding, while still maintaining everything that made Animal Crossing so popular. It's a really simple game. Uh, you start off by you're moving to a new town, and uh, you pretty much immediately find yourself in debt to a raccoon. I think named uh, Tom Nook, if I'm remembering right. He gives you a loan so that you can afford a home and clothes and tools and whatnot, but then you have to pay back that money in this game. They're called bells. So there is a point to the game, uh, other than just, you know, creating your little world, but uh, the true joy that you get from this game is just treating it like what it is. It's a sim game. You know, I'm a huge fan of simulation games. I, uh, was quite literally addicted to The Sims 3 for a while. Um, so it's a, it's in the same vein as those kind of games, but, um, much less realistic. You can, uh, dig around to find fossils and seeds, uh, collect uh, fruits and flowers. Uh, there's lots of items and clothes and furniture, uh, wallpapers and carpets. It's, it's just a lot of fun if you're a completionist like me and if you just really, in particular, enjoy simulation style games. So, here you have the cartridge. And I actually think I have the instruction book in this one. I do. I'm a huge fan of instruction books, and these days, uh, most games you get, you're lucky if 
you get like a fold out brochure for an instruction booklet which to me is just really sad I mean on one hand yeah you're saving a lot of trees you're not d wasting as much paper but um you also miss out on a ton of artwork because instruction booklets are a form of art there's often pictures that you wouldn't have seen otherwise and I just there's something about instruction booklets that are charming I think maybe it's from just growing up on 90s games where a lot of the times the game story was not uh, really explored through the game itself a lot of the times the backstory was included in the instruction booklet as like a two to three page uh, written story and I loved that uh, in particular I know Donkey Kong did that A lot of the times, in recent games, you just kind of have to figure everything out on your own, which on one hand isn't so bad, but on the other, I don't really like going through the tutorials. I usually like to skip the tutorials on games, and I liked being able to refer to an instruction booklet if something wasn't making sense. And you just don't have that option a lot of the time today. Like right here, we have a couple pages about the museum, what's in the museum, what to do in the museum, and I just really appreciate that sort of thing, but I'm a big nerd. It's multiplayer, Q&A, tag mode, good old important legal information, oh this is, this is rich. How to use uh, the DS wireless connectivity. <laughs> Something we really take for granted today. It was very new at the time. I believe this game came out in 2005? Am I right about that? I graduated high school in 2007. And I got this game before I graduated. Yes, it says on the box, 2005. So yeah, welcome to Animal Crossing Wild World. Look at that two games and I'm already almost 15 minutes in. I love games. Next is another game I put too many hours on, and a lot of people, um, I think a lot of people, it's not that they underappreciated this game, I just think that, um, the version on the 3DS was pretty superior, um, the version on the N64 was amazing. I don't want to call it overlooked, I just think it's a game that I really enjoyed, and that is... Mario Kart DS. The ultimate Mario Kart race is on. And I'm actually starting to see a theme about my favorite games on the DS that I didn't realize before. A lot of my favorites are based not on the main content of the game, but on the, um, the extra mini games that came with it, and this is no exception. What was really unique to me about Mario Kart DS was there was a, it wasn't a story mode, it was um, challenges. There were lots of challenges and the challenges got harder as you went along and you got graded on the challenges. You could get one, two, or three stars, I think. And um, <laughs> I worked very long and hard on this and I managed to get uh, perfect ratings on all the challenges, and that was so tough. I thought it was just a really nice addition to the uh, Mario Kart formula to um, 
give us something other than racing to do with the skills that you need in order to do well at the game. And also the various challenges give you an opportunity to hone the skills to be a better racer in the game. For example, um, turbo boosting, drifting was very important in this game and it wasn't the easiest skill to master, but I found that the challenges allowed me to perfect those skills. Uh, one challenge in particular I remember, you were required to turbo boost a specific amount of times in a lap, and it was so hard to do without uh, falling off the track. Um, it really helped me to perfect my drifting skills in this game. Let's see what we got on the inside. Yes, I do have the instruction booklet and the cartridge. So the cover of the instruction booklet is the same as on the box. But again, it is a full booklet, not a brochure, which when we get to some of the uh, 3DS games, I'll, I'll talk about those instruction booklets. Okay, I mentioned about uh, Tetris DS, how there were items like in Mario Kart. And here are some of those items I had mentioned. Bananas, triple bananas, green shells, red shells, triple green and red, the spiny shell of doom, also known as the blue shell, fake item box, ba bum, mushroom, triple mushroom, golden mushroom, the bullet bill is so amazing, blooper, boo, lightning, oh, you hate getting struck by lightning in this game, and of course the classic star. Here's the game modes. You had Grand Prix, Time Trials. You could uh, race against a ghost, your own ghost. Versus mode, Battle mode, which is always so much fun. I particularly enjoyed the battle mode on this game, again, because you could connect online, and uh, at the time that was something so new, being, I mean, Computer users, internet users, that was uh, old stuff by the time these games came out, but um, for people playing handhelds, this was, this was pretty new stuff, getting to connect online and play with people across the world. Missions, that's what I was talking about before. The challenges were called missions in this game. Just so much good stuff. Oh, and you get your, um, this is one thing I really miss about instruction booklets. A lot of the times they would put, uh, character bios. For example, it says here, Luigi, he's a medium weight racer. Mario's younger brother, Luigi, is ready to race. His superb traction makes it harder for him to spin out. And then my favorite was always Peach, and actually, uh, in this game, my favorite was, oh, he's not listed because he was a secret character, but, um, I'll talk about Peach. A generally genteel princess. The heart of a competitor burns deep within her. She is adept at drifting. So sorry about my squeaky chair. I need to get some WD-40, I guess. But yeah, great thing about instruction booklets is getting all of these character profiles, and I really miss it. And, um, that's actually all of my DS games that I wanted to talk about. So four in total, including Tetris, which is somewhere in my house. But honestly, so much of Tetris DS was lost when internet connectivity was lost. Rest in peace, Tetris DS. 
So now it's time to talk about my favorite 3DS games, and I have five of those here. The first one, I normally wouldn't include remakes on this list, but I've actually got uh, a few remakes on the uh, 3DS favorites because the, um, the remakes that were released onto the 3DS I think are special. Just the fact that uh, they have uh, 3D graphics and um, they didn't just smack the original onto a cartridge and call it a new game. They really went above and beyond to enhance the graphics. So, first we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. Now, this game is included on my favorite uh, in 64 games, and I didn't feel right leaving it off of this list because it is so amazing. The graphics look wonderful. Um, I don't use the uh, 3D effect on my 3DS very often because it gives me a headache, but um, I wish I could use it more because it looks so good. I probably don't have to say too much about this game because it's a classic. It's a game that almost everyone loves. I'm a big fan of Game Grumps, so... If you are too, you've probably seen Aaron or Ego Raptor's uh, sequelitis about uh, Ocarina of Time, and he makes a ton of great points, but I still love this game. I don't have the cartridge in here, actually, whoops, but I do have the instruction booklet. Instruction booklet now. Remember before how it was an actual book with lots of pages? You'll see a big difference already. And, um, this trend only get, they only get more and more minimal from here. This was uh, an earlier 3DS release. And you can see it's no longer a book. It is a foldable brochure. But what was cool about this was that, um, it did open up a second time. So you did it. They managed to put in a lot of information, even in this brochure style. So you still get plenty of room for the artwork. But it's a bit difficult to open it up and um, conveniently look at it. Uh, as a kid, I treated instruction booklets kind of like comic books. I uh, read them over and over. They were a lot of fun. Convenient to take around with you, just like a, a regular book. But uh, I do like how the cover of this is different than the cover on the case. But yeah, I, I won't talk too much about this game because, again, Everyone knows about the Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, this one being 3D. Next, I'll do these two together because they are both Pokemon and very similar Pokemon games at that. We have First, we have Pokemon X, which is one half of Pokemon X and Y. On the cover here, you have the legendary Pokemon Xerneas, which is actually one of my favorite Pokemon. One of. Not the favorite, but uh, one of my favorites. Mostly because of the Pokemon TCG. I'm in love with Geomancy Xerneas and Xerneas Break right now. They are just so fun to play with. Uh, Pokemon X and Y were the first Pokemon games on the 3DS, and they made quite a few changes to the game and the formula that, to me, 
made the game so much more playable. I got really into this game during X and Y. I, um, I spent hours on the uh, daycare breeding system trying to get Pokemon with uh, five or six perfect IVs. Um, I played on uh, Battlespot quite a bit. Same as with Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, which is one half of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. This is a remake of the Generation 3 Pokemon games, uh, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, and then there was Emerald. So, in this game, you've got uh, Kyogre on the front here, which is the box legendary, the other one being Groudon. And your adventure takes place in Hoenn. Now again, this is more than a simple remake. Uh, there are, there's more things to do, there's more story elements to uh, seek out. Um, and they added a really neat fi feature in this game that I'm really disappointed isn't coming back in Sun and Moon, or didn't come back in Sun and Moon, and that is the soar feature. You were able to fly around on Latios or Latias, and uh, just fly to a location instead of pressing a button and then being transported to that location. I thought that was, I mean, it's kind of a pointless addition, but it was a lot of fun. You know what? It wasn't actually pointless because there were a lot of places you couldn't go to unless you flew to them by soaring onto Latios or Latias. And it was really in this version that, uh, I went absolutely ham with breeding Pokemon. I have about, I would say about 14 perfect 5 to 6 IV Pokemon that I like to play with on the battle spot. And, uh, it's just, it's so much fun. I haven't been playing it much lately because I've gotten so into the trading card game. But, um, as soon as I get sun and moon, I am sure I will be right back at it with breeding competitive Pokemon. Because, um, I don't gen my Pokemon. I don't think that's right. I like to get them legitimately. It's just, I guess that's just the way I like to play. So yeah, you got Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Pokemon X. Try to open this without it being too loud. There's really not uh, much of an instruction book at all. I may have taken it out if there was one, but there's the cartridge. And this one. Sure, instead of an instruction booklet. You can see Pokemon Y here with Evil Tell. And this is the trend now. We've gone from full booklets to a three page fold down brochure. On one hand, I know that it's much more environmentally conscious to do it this way, but I can't help but miss traditional instruction books. Maybe one day I should do a show and tell of the old retro instruction booklets that I've saved over the years. Alright, two games left. In this next one, I actually have not had the time to delve into it the way that I would like to. It is another simulation game, you know, in the same vein as um, Animal Crossing, but it's much, it's got a lot more depth than Animal Crossing. There's, um, similar to, I guess, Minecraft. I don't really play Minecraft, but similar to it, there's a crafting system. 
you choose a job um, and a role to play. It's called Fantasy Life. I got it for Christmas two years ago, and I have not put near enough time into this absolutely fantastic game. Let's see, all roads lead to the adventure of a lifetime. Create the life you've always wanted. Craft, cast, hunt, and battle your way through a vast world filled with magic, dragons, and ancient secrets. And you aren't limited to doing one job, you can do multiple jobs. So you choose one of 12 classes and evolve your life when you adopt a new one. Craft items, learn spells, level up, journey to the ends of the world. And you can see there's a bunch of pictures characters through here, and those represent the various jobs or lives, fantasy lives, that you can choose from. Um, my real, one of my, one of my real life jobs, I kind of do a lot of different jobs. I'm a metal worker, a silversmith, so in this game, I decided to be a blacksmith. So you go out and you find various metals, and you craft various tools so that you can uh, learn how to make swords and shields and weapons for the uh, warrior or uh, soldier class that's in the game. So it's really neat. Everything is fairly interconnected, and it's kind of like an MMO mixed with like an Animal, animal Crossing style game. And it's just a lot of fun, and I wish I had more time to play it. Maybe, maybe that can be one of the uh, many upcoming Let's Plays that I'd like to do. There's the cartridge. And the uh, instruction brochure. This is one that folds out, so you do get more information in one of these fold-out brochures than you would uh, one that's just a three-page fold-out. So you do still get some artwork that is nice. The money in this game is called Dosh. I think that's neat. I really, I really want to play this game again. It's been, it's kind of. Um, it's a deep game. There's a not like deep as in mature philosophical stuff going on. Deep as in there is a lot to do. It, there's a depth to the game in the uh, the system for how much there is to do. And I just never did have the time to delve fully into it the way that I want to. But it's but it's got a, it's had enough of an impression on me, even still, that I would call it one of my favorite 3DS games. I do recommend it, especially if you enjoy um, if you enjoy games with crafting, if you enjoy simulation style games, or MMO kind of games. Especially if you like all three, it really is a great mixture of those genres. So yeah, Fantasy Life 3DS. And we have one more, which is good because I've managed to go over 30 minutes with one, two, three, four, seven games again. And we're about to do the eighth. And it is another remake that I... And I did talk about this game a bit in my N64 vlog video. And that is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. I adore this game. I think that most people who did play Majora's Mask will tell you that as much as they love Ocarina of Time, this is a this is a better game. This is a better game. It's more creative. It's uh, darker. It has more mature themes. There's more to do. Um, 
don't remember if I said this already, but the gameplay is really, really unique. Even if I've already said it, I'll say it again. The gameplay is very unique. The uh, three-day system was so intricate, and this was one of those games on the N64 that required the expansion pack, just because it was so jam-packed full of stuff to do. But if you haven't played this game, uh, the general basic story is uh, Link gets um, transported to a new world, and he runs into yeah, uh, this little guy here, and he has this mask, Majora's mask, and the, uh, he says he's the skull kid with Majora's mask, and he's very mischievous, and he has summoned the moon to crash into the world in three days, and everyone will die if you don't stop the moon. But as you know, three days is not near enough time to uh, complete everything to do in a Zelda game. So there's this mechanic using the Ocarina from Ocarina of Time where you can somewhat manipulate the flow of time. You can make time go faster or slower. You can skip ahead to the next day. Um, or at the end of the three days before the moon crashes down, you can play the ocarina to send yourself back to the first day, and you have to do that. It's just so unique, and if you haven't played it, you need to play this, and this remake is gorgeous. The uh, graphics are very similar to the remade uh, Ocarina of Time 3DS, perhaps even better, and this game was beautiful, even when it was full of polygons on the N64. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I would say it's in my top five of all time. The world will end in three days. Can you stop the apocalypse in time? Also, the mask system was so cool. You would wear various masks and you would transform into a Goron or a Zora or a Deku Scrub. There is the cartridge right there. That mask is just iconic now. I guess I've taken out the instruction book, but um, there's actually an extremely interesting there's an extremely interesting theory by uh, the game theorist Matt Pat. I don't know if you any of you watch his channel, but he has a theory about Majora's Mask that I love. But I won't get into it on here. But if you like this game, if you've already played this game, and you have not yet seen Matt Pat's theory about this game, highly recommend you check that out. It's really cool. So yeah, The Legend of Zelda: Majora's Mask. 3D. There you have it. I have finally finished my favorite handheld Nintendo games. It took me two videos, which I did not expect, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful night.